Hi there, I'm Catherine Given, Senior Style and Market Editor at Lux Interiors and Design. Thanks for tuning into the new Statement Bathroom Takeover on Design TV, where today we are talking all things tile and specifically how it can completely transform a space. I love the world of tile. It's one of my favorite markets to cover and no one does it better than Ann Sachs, right? So I am thrilled to be joined by Arabella Doyle, Marketing Director for Ann Sachs. Hi, Arabella. Hey, Catherine. As well as a designer that I greatly admire, Laura Umansky, founder and CEO of Laura U Design Collective. Hi, Laura. Hi, thanks for hosting me. So something that I know we really want to discuss today is how there's sort of been this shift, right, in using tile beyond the kitchen, beyond the bathroom, into other areas of the home, right, like mud rooms, storage spaces, laundry rooms, even on staircases. Um, and it's fun because, you know, designers and homeowners, I feel like they're mixing it up um, and it can kind of be this unexpected moment in design, right? It really Tile really makes a statement. So Arabella, I know you've been, you know, entrenched in the world of tile and ANSACs for, for some time. So I'd love, you know, to hear what you're seeing when it comes to how tiles being used in the home. Yeah, I mean, when I joined ANSACs, definitely it was, you know, we were seeing sort of tile in the more traditional places of a backsplash or a primary bathroom. And since, you know, in the last sort of few years, we're seeing it pop up everywhere. From, I mean, one of my favorite places was um, Emily Seed Interiors to this amazing staircase that has like the risers of tiles. So it's that really unexpected moment um, or through, you know, a really beautiful entryway um, that we're really seeing people like trying to make a statement with their personality right from that moment, that get go. So there's a really beautiful Cape Marco project that has Benton in the entryway and it's a relatively smaller space, but it really has that sort of wow factor. Oh, beautiful. So I'm curious, I feel like we can kind of guess, but why do you think, you know, these shifts are happening into these other spaces of the home? I mean, I think, you know, the past sort of few years, we've really seen, or the past year and a bit, um, we've really seen how the home has to do so much more than it's ever had to do. It's, you know, it's a space we are literally living and breathing in all the time. And as a result, I think people really want to have it reflect more of them. And I think, you know, with tile being the sort of jewelry, I always like to say, of the home, you know, that is ultimately their personal statement coming through. And so they're allowing themselves to think beyond just the white subway tile into more of these areas of different textures or patterns. And obviously, that's something that Ann Sachs, we have a plethora of. Yeah, that's a great point. And I, because I think of obviously tile is so decorative, as you said, it really makes a statement, but it's also really practical, at, you know, when it comes to cleanliness, right? Yeah, and that's the other thing. I mean, I think, you know, hard surfaces are so much easier to clean. And then as, you know, we're so much more aware of having that need. And I think that's why, you know, we are seeing tile coming out of these other spaces into, mm -hmm. you know, playrooms or living spaces. I've even seen people tiling, you know, uh, bedrooms. Oh, um, really? Wow, okay. So it's, um, you know, I think the ease of it, as well as that sort of statement, design statement, is really, it's really coming into its own, which is fantastic. So Laura, I, I'm such a fan of your designs. They're so beautiful, they're smart, they're functional, forward thinking. But before we sort of jump in and look at a few of your specific spaces, do you mind just generally telling us how you approach tile, you know, when you're working on a project, especially in some of these, you know, maybe more unusual spaces now? Our firm is really grounded in this philosophy of being light, bright, bold, and contrasting. And so, we can do that in so many ways, and um, especially in recent years with tile. And so you'll see with some of our images that we really go for it. Like we're not afraid. Um, and so I love that statement moment behind a powder room sink. Um, but also like Arabella was saying in a playroom, um, we're using really fun pieces in like a family management center. So, which is for all intents and purposes, like a little, study and we're using that as backsplash or on the floor there. So I think um, we really approach it first um, in our projects. I'm thinking wow. in order of sequence. Um, yeah. yeah, I think definitely tile is going to come up first for me. 
tile forward. I like that. So I want to dive into some of your yes, tile forward, right? Yeah. Um, this green tree project in Houston, Texas, I believe, has a lot of tile eye candy. Can you talk to us about some of these spaces? Yes, um, and we went a little Anzax crazy in this house <laughs> because it's a mid-century modern um, with a contemporary bent, but it is mid-century modern. And so we found that the modern field tile, the made by Anzax, really was perfect for several of the key spaces in this home. Um, plus, it's this gorgeous tile with all of these different um, raised areas and the glazing is beautiful. So it was really versatile for us too. So clearly, you know, you kind of have this unique approach when it comes to color and pattern, right? Um, so I want to hear a little bit how that translates, you know, into the tile you choose, you know, you're kind of making this bold statement, right? Sometimes when it comes to tile and color and pattern, yeah, um, I love playing with scale. So, mm -hmm. and that can be um, that can be really fun. So something that you would think is made for a tiny tile, we may go big scale. So um, I think that that is really challenging just preconceived notions of what should happen in a, a space that you're gonna use tile. Um, and alternatively, we'll use a tiny little pattern like I'm redoing or I'm renovating my uh, daughter's bathroom. And it is going to be head to toe, one by one mosaic. So I'm super excited about that. Ooh, I can't wait to see that. Is that colorful too? Colorful it music? is. It's yeah. um, it's the Antex context tile in the one by one, and it's a, it's spa is the color, and it's this really gorgeous muted blue, um, very serene, which my nine year olds need. So just like a side note, I feel like, you know, whites are always going to be like the bread and butter, right, of tile. But, you know, like what colors are you sort of gravitating towards now? Are you blues, greens? I feel like you kind of have this gutsy approach, but is there anything that you sort of see, I don't know, trending or um, something that you're kind of, it's on your wish yeah. list color wise? Um, definitely warmer whites. So we're gravitating away from that really cool I, sterile I, white tile. So we're going warmer. So, um, sham beige, I love that kind of like champagne meets beige color. Uh, so again, it's really flexible and you can use it with a lot of different interiors. Um, our clients love blue. So we do a lot of blue. Um, green is definitely uh, shown up quite a bit recently. Not as often as blue, though, it's not as approachable, I don't think, especially when it comes to committing to a tile. Um, it's my favorite color, though, so. <laughs> you know, I'm strangely, me, me too. I know, I love green, but um, yeah, I think probably just warmer whites, warmer grays, um, going away from that cool, sterile Okay, good to hear. So are you still into terrazzo as much as I am? I feel like it's, it's still here. I love it. I want to do like a kitchen in it, a bathroom. You too? I live for terrazzo. I think it's amazing. Um, I walked into this home that a client's considering renovating the other day and they had terrazzo that had been there for 30 years. And I was like, we're keeping that. We're blowing out everything else. Um, but Anne Sachs has terrazzo in this colorway. Like again, it's this warmer white and it's called brulee and I'm obsessed. So what, what else are you using? I know like made is a go-to for you, right? Yes, made finds a home pretty much in all of our projects. Um, context, gorgeous, really versatile, love using that. Savoy is new and has a lot of cool patterns. So I'm dying to use that. We've spec'd it on a project that has not been installed yet, but it will be. Ooh, fun, okay. Uh, and of course the terrazzo, like we already talked about. Yeah, and it's interesting too, because I know, I think Ann Sachs, they have like a darker, you know, colorway. I feel like it, it's almost black, right, uh, Arabella? Yeah, we've got um, we've got the black and white terrazzo. We've also got a gray. We've got a white, and we have um, an aubergine. So, um, yeah, we have terrazzo in many different ways, and also we have the fluted terrazzo as well, which has been huge, um, huge success. We launched uh, the white last year, and then the the um, the one that Laura mentioned earlier um, is the one that she's putting in her bathroom? Yep, my primary bathroom. Yeah. The brulee and the fluted is 
fantastic. It yeah, the food by is the installer, like another level. The installer unboxed it and was like, wow, I've never <laughs> seen anything like this. And you know, it's a big deal when the installer is like, they always yeah. try to play it cool. <laughs> <laughs> So Laura, I'm kind of curious to get your take on how location as well as use of the home really affects, you know, product and tile choices. You know, at Lux, it's sort of in our DNA. We know that, you know, a sunny SoCal home is going to be used, you know, much differently by homeowners than let's say like a Chicago penthouse or a second ski home in, you know, Colorado. But can you tell us a little bit about how, you know, you approach location? and functionality, you know, when it comes to a home and sort of the tile that you're using? Yeah. So most of our clients are young families. So the tile that we're specifying is going to need to be resilient, obviously for using it on the floor. And we pick our points for using specialty tiles like um, Beaumont, for example, we use on a wall because it's a mosaic and it's beautiful and it's customizable, but we want to keep that away from your three-year-old. Um, and it is site-specific. Every... and uh, geographically specific. So Colorado and the mountains has a very different style than right. Houston and River Oaks, for example. Um, so yeah, I do think that stylistically we're influenced by the geography and also by the client. We are so client centric. Um, we do not push our design aesthetic on anyone. Um, we want to get to know them, their lifestyle, what their needs are with tile and with every other finish um, before we even go to the drawing board. So a recent collection that I am really loving is Koros. Can you tell us about that, Arabella? Yeah, no, we've definitely seen a real sort of increase in uh, people asking for mosaics. And so this is a really beautiful micro stone micro mosaic that we've um, introduced this year and we've got amazing feedback from it. It's just like the designs are just beautiful. Laura, you're using it, right? Yes. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that is incredible. It looks like a textile almost like that micro mosaic mm -hmm. looks like it's woven. It's really incredible. Yeah. It's a really interesting technique. I believe that they've used in order to get that, that sort of look and feel. So, you know, just to wrap it up, as you mentioned, you're, you're working on building, you know, a new home, right. For you and your family in Aspen, Colorado. I am in Snowmass village. Yep. Oh, lucky you. Well, I can't wait to see shots and images, you know, when that's complete, but can you tell us a little bit, you know, about some of the tile choices, you know, you're going with? Sure. Um, so I mentioned earlier that my daughter's bathroom, I have nine-year-old twin girls and I wouldn't do Beaumont for them either. So we are doing context all over. I mean, walls, floors, um, shower surround, tub sh surround, everything. So it is going to be quite the statement, even though it's going to feel neutral and monolithic, it's still going to be pretty over the top, I think, just because there's so much of it in the one by one mosaics. Um, the dog, we're doing a dog shower, which is also a really fun place to play with tile. Um, um, and so on the walls in that space, we are doing the Savoy. And then the um, shower floor on the floors is a really cool little penny round. So that'll be a pretty dynamic space too. And then the master, um, we are going to go crazy with the terrazzo and the brulee. Oh, I cannot wait to see that. And I what's know. interesting too is, you know, you're obviously using this all year, right? So in the winter, you guys are- Oh yes, we live here. And in the summer, you're hiking, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it functions year round. It's perfect. And honestly, all of these collections, I feel could translate just as easily from a mountain home to like you were saying, LA or, you know, Southern California. I don't think any of them would be out of place or feel not at home in either location. So that's yeah, a great, I feel, I feel good about that. I feel like we could pick it up and move it. Well, I'm going to stay tuned for that. And, you know, Laura and Arabella, thank you guys so much for joining us, you know, discuss tile and the shifts we're seeing, you know, right now in the marketplace, it's interesting, you know, to think of this whole new world of tile beyond the kitchen, beyond the bath. And I can't wait to see what Ann Sachs continues to come up with and, you know, Laura, how, how you spin tile in your projects. So thank you. Thank you both.